DJ ATV. Welcome to DJ MTV where you get latest news updates. If today is your first time seeing our videos, you are at the right channel and we promise not to disappoint you as we are here to update you on all trending and latest news. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this and you are welcome on board. Please share, comment and like our work as this give us the strength and ability to carry on with our good work. Let's get into the main news. As he day hot, make we day release them small small I beg. News number 1. Bala Chiroma replaces Ibrahim Magu as new EFCC chairman. Bala Chiroma has been named as replacement for the suspended acting chairman of Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu. No details yet about the newly appointed acting chairman of the commission, who was the commissioner of police in charge of FCT Police Command, Abuja. Mago was suspended on Tuesday by the Buhari administration amidst allegations of gross misconduct, to senior EFCC officials confirmed. The suspension was also confirmed by top officials at the presidency. The officials, who spoke under anonymity because the matter was still developing and the memo conveying it was yet to be circulated to Mr. Magu and other concerned parties, said the next most senior EFCC official next to Mr. Magu was asked to take charge. But there are concerns that the next official, Ola Ulukoyede, the agency's secretary, has no background as an operative. This raises the possibility of Mohamed Abba, director of operations, being allowed to take charge because of his background as an operative. Efforts to reach presidential spokespersons, Gaba Shehu and Femi Adeshino, on the suspension have not been successful. Mr. Magu was recently accused of corruption, insubordination and abuse of office by Attorney General Abubakar Malami. Stemming from Mr. Malami's allegations, Mr. Magu was arrested on Monday morning by a police team outside his office in Abuja. He was driven to the presidential villa where he appeared before a panel investigating the allegations against him. After his appearance before the panel, he was taken into custody by the police, where he was held overnight by detectives. Mr. Magu has been leading the anti-graft agency in acting capacity since 2016, overseeing scores of high-profile corruption cases that have seen many politicians and businessmen convicted and sentenced to prison. He strongly denied wrongdoing, with his aides arguing that he has run the office diligently and away from sharp practices. News number 2. Ibrahim Magu, the EPHEMEILITY of Power Asterisk. By Michael Zekome, San. I complained bitterly, with facts, figures and data, that recovered looted funds and property were being re-looted by the Magu-led team, who were supposed to keep the gate of our commonwealth. They looted our treasury in collaboration with their cronies, friends and acolytes. Mr. Ibrahim Magu has been acting as EFCC chairman for over five years. The Senate on two occasions refused to confirm him, based on a clear report on damning allegations of corruption leveled against him by government secret agency, the DSS. Magos compromised supporters and chief publicists, eating from his table and those afraid of public denigration in the so-called anti-corruption war, hailed and, Ranka DDD, him. They abused the Senate and spat on people with plural voices, who direct call for Magos' sack, or at least, his voluntary resignation. Such paid grobulas, bootlickers and historical revisionists always claimed that corruption is fighting back. They were not interested in the truism or otherwise of the available cold facts. It was simply enough that their cold-blooded god and power Bacchanalian deity who had terrorized everyone to submission, must be appeased on the altar of obsequious, savile and sycophantic coven. Everyone spoke only in whispers, at best in soliloquy or monologue. The fear of Magu for everyone was the beginning of wisdom. Not quite everyone really, but nearly everyone, for I refuse to be browbeaten or intimidated by such blatant primordial display of asinine power. I fought on. I criticized. I critiqued. I challenged him and his impunity severally in courts across Nigeria. I won virtually all the cases. I called for a change of the way and manner the anti-corruption war was being selectively and upper-quality fought. I wrote a public letter in 2017, to the then acting president, Prof. Yemi Oshibanjo, son, at a time his boss, President Muhammadu Buhari, was sick on a London hospital bed. I complained bitterly, with facts, figures and data, that recovered looted funds and property were being re-looted by the Magu-led team, who were supposed to keep the gate of our commonwealth. 
They looted at our treasury in collaboration with their cronies, friends and acolytes. Mago was the new sheriff in town. I got no reply to my letter to Oshibanjo. I wrote a reminder. No dice. I later challenged Mago publicly, face to face, on at least three occasions, one of which was at a ceremony at the Federal High Court in Abuja. Another was at a capacity building workshop organized by the EFCC at its training academy, in Karu, Abuja, which he graciously personally invited me to. He refused to change his ugly ways. It was clear to me and discerning Nigerians that power had gotten into his bald head. Power is an aphrodisiac, an intoxicating liquor. It bemuses. It gives delusional, Dutch courage. It forces reason to vacate its seat. So, for over five whole years, Magu continued to work as acting chairman of the EFCC, in spite of the clear provisions of Section 2-3 of the EFCC Establishment Act 2004, which provides that the Senate must confirm him before he could continue in his office. He recruited expert constitutional lawyers, who argued that Magu could stay in office till kingdom come, whether or not the Senate confirmed his appointment. The Senate, the EFCC Act and even the Constitution could go to hell. After all, Magu was irreplaceable and was doing an incredibly marvelous job of fighting corruption. But, once upon a time, on a God-appointed day like that of yesterday, divinely accorded the EFCC's anti-corruption, Shah Imperius Ibrahim Magu, one courageous and dead delivery man and former governor of Ekiti State, called Peter, the Rock Ayodele Fayoshe, Osho Komole, led by his fearless, dogged and courageous lawyer, Chief Michael Zekome, San, voluntarily submitted himself to the EFCC, less than 24 hours after leaving office as governor. He had donned a t-shirt that publicly proclaimed, EFCC I am here. He was promptly clamped into a dingy dungeon of a detention facility, notwithstanding the fact that he had voluntarily submitted himself. He was humiliated, mocked, taunted, derided and his humanity degraded by Magu and his fierce goons. Little did Magu know, or care to realize, that what goes around comes around. Last night, Magu was given his usual doled out treatment. He was detained at a cold police cell at the police headquarters, Louis Edet House, Abuja. He was even accosted on the way from his EFCC's Formula Street office, Abuja, and driven away to Aso Villa, to face the presidential panel probing him on his alleged corruption infractions. The erstwhile roaring lion could not believe it. The chicken has finally come home to roost. The proud Poshua is now being pursued. The assumed victor has become the victim. This is a tragic reminder of the urgent need for temporary power wielders to act with moderation, modesty, circumspection and humility. The roaring emperor is now being turned into the cringing vassal. The mighty Iroko tree in the forest that mocks lesser plants is being diminished into a mere dwarf and hill shrub. How the cookies crumble. This shows the transience and ephemerality of raw might and strength. The vanity and vaingloriousness of the illusion and delusion of grandeur of power and influence. Fellow countrymen, please, let us not accord Magu the same shameless media trial, public conviction, lynching and execution of people, who were nothing but mere suspects, and thus presumed innocent, as he did with Eklat and Swashbuckling. Let us presume him innocent until he has been subjected to the due process of law, through a free and fair public trial, not media trial. The fact that he did it to others did not and does mean it was right. To wrongs can never make a right. As I argued again and again, like a broken record, the anti-corruption war was never a regenerative and ethics-defining regimental war. It was purely a score settler against rights activists, the opposition, public critics, plural voices and dissenters. The breeze has finally blown and the smelly backside of the foul has been exposed. The following days and weeks will open up new vistas, the Pandora boxes and closed cupboards of decaying skeletons. Nigeria, we hail thee. Thank you for all your time listening to us. Thanks for all your love and support. Bye for now. DJ